Hello. So I've been asked uh, time and again over the past few years, what do I do to travel? Like, what are things that I do to prepare for a trip? Like, how do I how do I travel? Am I a backpacker? Uh, like, what do I do? So I thought I'd make a little video showing you the sorts of things that I that I pack when I go on a trip, and uh, that's because tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'm going to Africa. And I've never been to Africa, not sure exactly what to expect. I've done a lot of research. You know, that's the number one thing. Number one piece of advice when you do a trip. Don't just hop on a plane. You know, you want to do a lot of preparation to make sure that you have everything in order, that you know what the safety is like, uh, that you have, like, some places have, like, bizarre rules, and you don't want to offend anybody. You don't want to do anything that's going to get you in trouble or anything. So I would suggest like picking up a guidebook or even like going on like um, wiki travel. That's pretty good. Just like get like a grasp of like where you're going. Um, when I travel around and I, I go backpacking around, a lot of times I'll run into tourists and I'm like, oh, so what are you seeing here? And they're like, I don't know, just popped over. And it's, I'm mind boggled by it because I've had so many issues with the amount of preparation that I've had that, uh, yeah, it's it's insane to me to like go to another country and not be like prepared. I'm just putting everything together and this is probably a good way to do it is take all the things you're going to pack and like lay them out uh, just so you know that you've got it all. You kind of like do a little checklist. Uh, I will write, actually write out a paper tr checklist of things that I need and even with all that I'll probably end up forgetting something. So here's my backpack with my cat sitting on it, making sure that everything is the way it should be. Is everything okay, Kitty? Yes. So uh, it's not a big one, it's just a small backpack, but uh, that's, I try to pack actually very light. And you're going to see that. Uh, main example right here, <laughs> this is my clothing for three weeks. Like This is all I have. I don't have like a whole lot. And uh, what I do, and like how I can do this without being like totally disgusting, is by keeping everything small, okay? So first off, like here is my towel. It is not a full towel. This is just like, here, I'll lay it out so you can see. Ah, this is just like a large washcloth, but this is something that I, like a little tip that I picked up when I was in Japan, is that I would go to some hotels or hostels and they would just give you a washcloth to clean yourself with. They wouldn't give you like a full, ho uh, a full uh, bath towel. And, you know, really you don't need it. I mean, the bath towel is great because you can wrap yourself in it, but if you're just trying to get dry, uh, it makes a lot more practical sense to just have something small. So what I do is I'll take this into the shower and I'll dry myself off with it, and I'll change in the shower, and then go back out. Even if I'm at a hostel, like, that's totally acceptable, you know? You just put on your clothes in the shower room. And, um, yeah, that's fine. So this takes up, like, such little space. I know, like, a lot of people, they like bigger towels. You can get, like, one of those microfiber, quick-drying kind of towels. But, you know, honestly, just, like, a regular, like, washcloth, like a, a fairly large washcloth that has decent absorbency to it is fine. For clothing, uh, I pack four pairs of socks, and in here there are four pairs of underwear. It's in a bag because I just think it's kind of like an odd thing to show everybody in the world my underwear. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be in this little plastic bag. Actually, where I'm going in Kenya, I'm spending. I have a layover in Kenya, and recently I just got like an alert in my email from Kenya Airlines. Do not bring plastic bags into the country. Plastic bags are, <laughs> I guess, illegal now throughout the entire country. So if you bring a plastic bag, it like actually warned me like they will, you can actually get in serious trouble. This is my uh, regular clothing. Here are two t-shirts. These are very small lightweight like look how small these t-shirts are like they fold down into nothing i just got these at like uniqlo they are a just like a fast drying i think they're probably made out of like nylon or like rayon like some sort of like plasticky material 
And what's great about it is that, you know, they... I like the way they look. They've got, like, a little bit of a shine to them, which is a little weird. But uh, they fit really well. And they are, like... They don't wrinkle very easily. I mean, it's wrinkly now because it's laying on the floor. But, like, you shake it out and, like, the wrinkles come out of it. And they pack down really small. Uh, they're good in hot weather. They're, like, very, like, cooling. But most importantly is that they dry very quickly. So if I do the wash... Uh, which I'll explain my, my laundry situation in a moment after my cat is done sitting on my shirt. Uh, like this is super convenient. It packs small, it's uh, easy to clean. So I have two of those, and this is like a new thing. I normally would not do this. I w this is the first year that I'm doing this, and I think it's, uh, it's just a good idea to keep things that are going to be packed down pretty small. Hi! Are you going to come with me? Can you fit in my bag? Yeah, show everybody your butthole. Great. Uh, here is one pair of pants. Yep, just one. And similarly, I'm bringing this because it's made out of like a plasticky kind of material. I don't know exactly what it is. There's probably a tag in there somewhere. I'm not going to look. It's probably like nylon or, or something. So it looks like jeans. They're very stylish. Like I like the way they look, but they're also... Uh, fairly light and they're made out of a material that dries very quickly so that is handy it doesn't seem like a whole lot but you also have to consider that i'm going to be wearing a t-shirt and i'm going to be wearing a pair of pants so a pair of pants i feel like i can wear for maybe two days maybe three if it's not like super hot or like sweaty or gross so uh that will give me like four five days wearing pants just like two pairs of pants will like bring me through like four or five days um the shirts like i'll wear these like uh like one like once or maybe twice depending i know it's maybe like a little bit gross <laughs> but like if i'm out and about then um you know, I'm, I'm trying to reduce the amount of laundry that I do. So if I'm wearing a shirt and like the next day it doesn't look dirty, it doesn't smell, looks okay, then I might wear it a second time. Uh, yeah, hate to hate to expose that little secret about myself, but might wear it a second time. Um, if it's dirty or something, then no, I, I'll wear another one. And then even like I only wear it once a day, that gives me three days because I have three shirts. You know, two here plus the one I'll be wearing when I get on the plane. And I do have pants on, you know, like I'm going to be wearing pants <laughs> that, uh, so I have two pairs of pants, I've got three shirts, I've got five pairs of socks, I've got five pairs of underwear, when you include the ones I'm wearing. Now what makes this even less disgusting <laughs> is this, what I have right here is a little soap container, I actually have to get a new one, which I'll probably do when I get out there, but that is laundry soap. You do not want to clean your face with this. It will probably blind you. But, it, which is probably why it's not like a common thing in the US. But if you travel, you'll see it just about like everywhere in the world. Uh, these are bars of soap that contain laundry detergent. So you can wash your clothes like in a sink, like fairly easily. So what I'll do is I'll just like hand wash the socks and the underwear, the, the shirts, the pants, like everything. I'll just hand wash that in the sink. Um, you know, when I need to, usually I'll do it, like, more often, because, like, you know, ideally I'd be doing it, like, every night, and then it'll be dry by the morning, especially with all my, like, quick drying stuff, but worst case scenario, like, I'm out, and I'm, like, in a hurry, and I just, like, don't have the ability, then I can at least go, like, five days without washing clothes, without being, like, a total disgusting, like, person. But, you know, ideally I'll be, like, washing my clothes, like, every night or every other night and be able to, like, not worry about not having enough laundry. Now, every now and then uh, I'll be going somewhere where it is very difficult to do laundry. It's very difficult to find the time. Like, maybe, like, the water is gross. See, like, I don't know always, like, where I'm going to end up being. And you might be in a situation where you're, like, in a village somewhere and it's, it's just not convenient to clean your clothes. So that's where like my final fail safe comes in and that is I'll buy stuff. Like right now I'm wearing this which I picked up in Laos 
and like I'll buy clothes when I go out. I'll always like buy at least like a shirt or I'll buy like some socks or something like that. That way, you know, one, I get a souvenir and two, uh, it gives me one less thing that I'm gonna need to wash. I mean, if you get it from a place that is like a department store, you know, you can wear it without cleaning it first. Uh, if you buy it like, you know, randomly, then you don't know where it's been, then you have to wash that first anyway. But like, I bought this at like a gift shop. Like no one wore it, it was fine. And that's usually the case I'm in. Uh, <laughs> so in that case, like you don't really have to worry so much about uh, running out of laundry. What I used to do before I bought those little shirts is I used to bring things that I didn't care about. I would bring t-shirts that I wouldn't wear anymore. I will sometimes get rid of that in order to make space in my bag. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll just leave it in the hotel that I'm staying at and be like, okay, like nearing the end of my trip, I'm like, I should really ditch this. I'm, my bag is like overflowing and I will get rid of socks, underwear, uh, maybe a t-shirt, maybe a pair of pants, and then it's much lighter. And these are things that like I'm not wearing so much anymore. So in a way I feel like I'm donating them to the cleaning lady. She's probably like, ew, and throwing them out, but like in my like crazy brain, I like to think that it's like finding a new life somewhere in another country. All of these things will end up going into this backpack, which I just feel, I was gonna actually put it in there to show you like how much space it takes up and all that, but I'm gonna wait because my cat just looks so peaceful. Oh, yeah, so I'm gonna wait on that. <laughs> Uh, next, we're going to move on to what I pack in this. Now, this is a little messenger bag that I love this thing. I picked this up in India in 2012. It has fallen apart over and over again, and like usually when I'm in another country, so I've had this repaired in the Philippines. I've had this repaired in Laos. It is. It used to be like a light brown, and now it's just got dirt on it from just like all these places. The lining completely fell out of it. It used to have like nice pockets and stuff like that. So now what I do is um, I learned this from uh, a female friend of mine. These little purse organizers are perfect. It's meant for a purse, but it's actually like super duper convenient for a messenger bag and it makes it very easy to uh, travel light. So like it's very quick for me to uh, Maybe like I just checked in to a hotel and I'm like going out really quick. I can just yank this thing out and just put like a couple things in here that I need and I can leave. Like it's it's very easy to do that uh, just to have like a removable compartment. And there's a lot of like little zippers and things like that to keep thing, everything organized. So uh, that is like what I'm working with. And this is something that I just carry with me everywhere I go. Uh, this is like always on me. So this is where like the most important things usually go. Uh, the backpack, I will probably end up leaving places. So that's where like clothing and stuff like that, stuff I'm not gonna be carrying is. Uh, so what goes in here would be like the most important things. So I've got like my flight itinerary here. So that's gonna go in there. That's important. Uh, I know a lot of people poo poo on printing things out, which, uh, yeah, totally. If you can use your phone to have, um, have all your flight details, like on your phone, save a tree and all that, that's great. If you're traveling to other countries though, uh, you need to back it up because some places you're going to show them your phone and they're going to be not, they're not going to accept it. Depends where you're going. I guess you can research it. But for me, I like to have a backup, uh, just in case. Also, if something happens to your phone, uh, run out of battery, it's not giving you data, you can't find the document in time, or someone steals it, like, there's a lot of things that can happen to your phone. It's always good to have a backup copy somewhere. So I have all the flight information. I'll also, like, write up a little itinerary day by day of, like, um, places to see and stuff to do, my hotel name, like, important information, uh, emergency contacts and all that. I'll like write that on a piece of paper as well and put that in there. I haven't done it yet, but um, that's another thing. Just having like a little cheat sheet to carry around with you is always a good idea. Uh, what else I have in here? I've got my passport. Very important to have your passport uh, because I'm going to Africa where uh, some areas ha need a yellow fever certificate. I have my yellow fever certificate with me. 
And uh, the only reason why I need this really is because of my layover in Kenya. I'm in Kenya for 12 hours, but I, tr I plan on leaving. And uh, Kenya, you don't need it. But if you go to Ethiopia after Kenya, you need, um, you need the certificate. So uh, I have a yellow fever certificate just for my layover kind of interfering with things. And I, I actually couldn't find this today. So I was like going crazy, like tearing apart my apartment, trying to find it, find it. And thankfully I did. Otherwise I was going to have to stay in an airport for 13 hours, which, um, yeah, glad I found it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> next I've got like a little notebook, um, and a pen. This is just like a nice little book. It's, it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's very light. It's got a little built-in bookmark to it, like a little ribbon. So it's easy to like jot any names down, information as I'm going through, uh, especially that I'm gonna be like trying to hunt down fruit, it's always good to have uh, something to just like write down information. Uh, if, I, if I meet somebody that is gonna give me like their number or uh, a friend that might be, you know, have like a farm or something, like, you always need something uh, quick and easy to jot down. I guess you could use your phone or something, but again, it's good to have, uh, I think, something um, just, uh, it's easier to use something like this. Also, like, if you want to, like, draw a picture for something, like, especially if you're dealing with, like, a language barrier, sometimes it's easier to take this out. The other thing that is really handy about having one of these is because I'm traveling sometimes to places where English is not the language people speak. It, a lot of times, like, people will speak a little bit of English, you know, people watch movies and, like, all that that are in English usually, or they might have learned it at school, but uh, maybe not enough where it's going to be helpful. So one thing that I'll do sometimes is I'll find somebody who does speak English. Um, very often it's like while well, I'm flying there, and I'll have uh, I'll ask very nicely if they will write down some basic phrases for me uh, in their language, in their script, you know, in their alphabet, because. Uh, then I can, and I can write underneath it, like this is what it says in English. So if I'm like, um, cause I'm a vegetarian, this is super handy. I'll usually be able to point like, is that vegetarian? Or I'm a vegetarian, or please make me something that does not have meat in it. Uh, I've had to do that in, um, in Laos, I had to do that. I had somebody write that down for me and it saved my neck a lot because people eat a lot of meat there. But I would be able to walk into a restaurant and be like, I don't eat any meat, please make me some sticky rice with vegetables with no meat. It's quicker and easier to like pull this out than rather like to futz with your phone. Majority of my time is going to be in Madagascar. So I think it's good to have a little booklet just in case your plans change, which uh, does happen. Uh, I have like a certain like plan that I wanna do, but you might end up somewhere where you have like extra time or you won't be able to go to the place you want to go and you need to make a, a quick decision on like what to do next, uh, this will outline like all of those places. Like you can see other places. So what I'll do is I'll read this book front to back before my trip, like months in advance, highlighting things that look interesting. And then I'll make an itinerary later, kind of skipping over everything except my highlights to kind of like put something together. And then I'll like work, I'll keep paring it down until I so like probably like a couple things that I like must do and some things that I might do if I'm like around there. So I plan my itinerary like based off the book as well as uh, things I find online. Because I mean obviously I'm not going to very touristy places. I'm going to markets and farms and stuff like that. But um, you know it's good to have like a few basic uh, essentials for every place that you visit some interesting things, and then, you know, I that is a great supplement to going to farms and stuff. However, I usually do not keep it in my little handbag. Uh, I probably am gonna start with it in there just so I have it for the flight if I wanna, like, go through again and uh, plan out a little bit more of my itinerary, but uh, this will inevitably end up in my backpack that way, um, you know, I don't have to, like, cart this around on me if I'm going out for just a day trip. Uh, next book, all about the Coco de Mer. So <laughs> this is uh, actually not super handy because it's mostly photos, but it is pretty interesting and will just be a little reading material for the plane. 
Uh, I also have a Kindle, which I will often bring with me, uh, just because it's, uh, you know, it packs very small. But uh, this time around, I'm not going to bring the Kindle, I don't think. I'm just going to bring this, and then um, I might, if I find like a book exchange or something, I might exchange this out for something else. Um, but yeah, usually, because I'm only gone for three weeks this time, if I was gone for longer than that, like a month plus, I would bring the Kindle full of books as well. But uh, this time, I, I don't, I don't know, it's just like one extra thing. Also, in this little bag, I have a few very important things. Um, one, sleep mask. This is essential, especially if you're staying at hostels where you might want to sleep and everybody else, they want to party. They want to keep the lights on. They want to be really annoying. Um, this is super, super handy. I, I tend not to stay at hostels anymore just because like they are very annoying. And um, yeah, I, I'm a little bit too old for that stuff now, but I still will. Um, just because I, I try to be a budget traveler, just not that much of a budget these days. I'll stay at a $10 hotel rather than a $3 hostel. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, still, these can be very handy, especially if like, you're trying to sleep on a bus or something. Uh, always good to have a sleep mask. For the same reason, I have a little thing full of earplugs. I tend to lose them as I go. Like I'll like one will fall out of my ear and then it's like gone, or it'll get gross like after using it so much. So that's why I have like a little thing full of them. Uh, so that is going to go in my little messenger bag. I've got a thing of Dramamine. Uh, this is good, especially if you're taking like a long bus ride or something and uh, you feel nauseous. This is a good way to go. I'm kind of paranoid about getting sick, so. This is uh, super handy to bring. I might not be able to get to my toiletry bag in here, so it's nice to have it like on me at all times, just in case I need it. Uh, power bank charger, handy. It also has a little flashlight. There you go. So that's handy, right? So that's gonna come with me as well in the messenger bag. Uh, headphones, yep. Uh, I've got a little thing of business cards. That's what my business card looks like, you know, with the leg behind my head. Fun times. Uh, just because, like, as you go along, you meet people, and uh, sometimes it's easier just to hand them a card rather than, you know, uh, pull out a phone that you might not have data on because you're, like, out in a village. So I tend to carry business cards with me uh, just in case. Uh, lock with a key, just because you might stay at a hostel or a pension or something where you would want to lock your bag. Uh, or sometimes if you're riding on a train or a bus, you want to lock your bag uh, so people can't get into it. Um, that's a time where you also want a chain. Me, I'm, I'm probably not going to be staying on a train where I need to lock my bag to something. That's what they do in like India. <clears throat> but um, I don't think I need the chain, so uh, if I need one, I'm going to buy one when I'm out there, because chains are super heavy. This is just a little crappy, uh, lightweight lock, but it would be you know, at least a deterrent if I'm staying at a hostel and need to lock a locker. So there's that. Uh, this is a little tote bag, especially since I am going to all these markets and stuff. It's, uh, you end up getting a lot of little teeny, like, wispy little bags, and it is not handy. It is not handy at all to have a bunch of little wispy bags, you know, so, uh, what I, I like to have something that's a little bit tougher, so even if, even though, like, well, having plastic bags is one, not good for the environment and, like, whatever, um, it's also, like, super inconvenient to have, like, a ton of little bags. So I prefer to have a tote bag with me. Um, that way I can keep everything in there. And especially now that I'm going to Kenya where plastic bags are the devil, um, it's uh, even handier to have this. Because this is not, I'm, I'm sure that this is okay. I'm sure the plastic bag thing is like a, a litter issue. So yeah, good for them. But um, yeah, I, I bring this with me. It just makes it a lot easier to transport fruit around. That will go into my day bag uh, but for the flight, it's probably going to go in my, in my backpack, but I'll take this in my day bag with me, uh, when I go out. <clears throat> I've got a cliff bar. This is just survival food in case, like, I need a meal and I can't get it. So this is going to go probably in my backpack. 
uh, just in case, like, I am out somewhere and I'm hungry but things are closed or... It happens. It happens a lot. I might get locked into my hotel room, which seems to happen, like, almost everywhere I go, where they, like, close the, the hallway with, like, a big metal gate and then I'm just, like, stuck in there starving for, like, eight hours. Yeah, don't want that to happen again. Uh, so, Cliff Bar is good, you know, at least it'll, like, get me through a meal if I need it. It's not like, they're fine, like, whatever, you know, people, you know, criticize them for being, like, unhealthy. And, like, honestly, I don't, I don't care. This is just, like, if I'm super hungry, I will have just, like, a dense little, like, brick of food. So that will either go in my messenger bag or in my backpack. Probably my backpack. I've got a bag of almonds. This is just a snack, mostly for the flight, honestly, because, you know, when you get there, food will be around. But uh, I like carrying nuts because they are filling. You know, they've got a lot of protein in them. They're, you know, you could theoretically survive on nuts for a while, although be it very bored. But this is good for me. I'm vegetarian, so having a thing of almonds around is is handy, especially if I end up getting on this flight and it just sucks. So sidebar, sometimes being a vegetarian when you're flying really sucks. So when I flew to India last time, it was like, like a 20 hour flight or something. I did that earlier this year. Uh, that was the worst possible meal experience of my life because they had, I think like they just had one special meal. And because I was vegetarian, they gave me the same meal that you would have if you were vegan, if you were kosher, if you were uh, diabetic, if you needed bland food, if you uh, had stomach surgery and you needed food, it was all the same. So what I ended up getting was awful. They gave me plain pasta with nothing on it. No butter, no sauce, no oil, nothing. Just plain pasta with a little thing of salt and pepper on the side and a side of cucumbers. Just raw cucumbers, like, sliced up as the salad. That was all it was. As the flight went on, they went through and they handed out, like, sandwiches to everybody. And everyone is getting, like, these, like, roast beef sandwiches or, like, whatever it was. Like, some, like, good-looking sandwich. And me, they handed me a triple-decker sandwich with, that was like this. Bread. Dry cucumber slices. Bread. Cucumber slices. Bread. With no seasoning, no sauces, nothing, not even toasted, just bread and dry cucumber in layers. That's all. <laughs> then I had another meal and it was pasta with cucumbers again. And then they went through uh, with handing people uh, little uh, ice creams. And I was expecting like the lady to just be like, here and hand me a whole cucumber and just like flip me off and walk away. <laughs> I was expecting that, but thankfully they were just like, oh, can you eat this? I'm like, yes, give me the ice cream. Give me all the ice cream, please. It was hell, absolute hell. Uh, and my snacks were in my bag, which I couldn't get because they made me check it. So uh, this time, this is going in my carry-on, or not just my carry-on, but my little messenger bag. So I have almonds. I would much rather eat like an entire pound of almonds than eat another cucumber ever again. Next for the uh, messenger bag is just a, you know, travel charger. I have salt and sugar. Sometimes people eat fruit that's like super, super sour and you put salt on it to neutralize the sourness. So you want just like a little bit of salt. You don't need a lot, just a little, little packet of it. So having a little thing of salt is, is handy because trying to find uh, salt otherwise can be kind of tricky. The sugar is for the same reason. Sometimes I get a fruit that it just is meant to have sugar on it. You know, some people eat it, so I might want to try it with sugar. Um, so I bring that as well, just a little bit because uh, this will get me through until I, at least I can find another fast food place that will give me more packets. So that goes in there. Uh, and that rounds out the messenger bag. That's everything is gonna fit in there just fine. Also for the backpack, I have uh, a bottle. 
This is just a bottle with like a screw on top. And what I like about this is that you can put anything in here and it's got a, a watertight seal. So I'll fill this, and it's like insulated too. So if I fill this with like coffee or something, it'll be hot for like the whole day. And I could also just like throw it directly into my backpack and not have to worry about it spilling. So this is super duper handy. Uh, a friend of mine actually gave this to me, uh, Sarah. So um, I don't know if Sarah watches my videos, probably not, but thank you, Sarah, for sending me this. It's like super duper handy. Uh, I might have said it in the past, but I am like a total coffee addict. So one thing that I do uh, if I'm going somewhere where I might not be able to get coffee, like if I'm going out into a lot of little villages in a non-coffee drinking region, like uh, China is like that, or India is like that, where you might be able to find like instant coffee, like in the most remote of places, but that does not really do it for me. What I will carry with me is a little Vietnamese coffee maker. Super handy if you are traveling to places like that. So I, what I'll do is I'll carry this. I'll usually pick up like a little bag of coffee, like wherever I land, or I'll bring it with me, I guess, like if I have the extra weight. Uh, I'll bring it with me, but yeah, what's great about this is that one, it's metal, so this thing is not going to get damaged. I've talked to people who you know will bring a little coffee maker with them that's portable, so they'll bring like a French press. Those things break, you know, they're they're glass. I guess you can get like one that is plastic or something, but um, those also are quite heavy. Like this thing just sits on top of a cup. It's like doing a pour over, but instead of having like something that is ceramic or requires filters, you could just have this little thing here. Um, so I don't know if you don't know how one of these works. Basically, you've got little holes on the bottom. It's got a little space in there. You fill that with coffee and then you take this little guy, you put it in there, you give it like a couple little turns and then this sits on top of your cup. It fits perfectly on that little thermos that I showed you a minute ago. And you pour hot water in. There's a little lid somewhere that covers the top to keep it like cool. And it just like filters through. Before I got that, I used to carry one of these over the top uh, coffee makers. And I just bring like a little stack with, of filters with me. I've got travel adapters. These are ones that I just happen to have with me. Um, I'm probably gonna have to pick up another one while I go out, but it's easier to find them usually like in the country you go to, uh, like at the airport or something. But uh, most of the countries I'm going to, I believe use this one, which is like a European plug. Um, this one is like any kind of thing to a Western plug, which sometimes is handy uh, if, you know, for my laptop, uh, which has three prongs. I don't have like one of those like convertible ones um, because, well, they're kind of heavy. You know, if I find like a light one, I'll, I'll totally buy that. But um, for me, like these things, like they weigh nothing and they're basically free. They, they're very, very cheap. You know, you can get them in another country for like less than a dollar. This is a laptop charger. So laptop charger is going to go and live in my backpack. Uh, I keep it usually towards the front, just so it's easy to access, because I'm probably going to use that uh, pretty often, like on a plane, I might plug it in, so I don't want to like bury it deep in my pack, so I'll put it like in an outer compartment on my backpack. Uh, next, we've got camera equipment, because uh, I am going to be YouTubing while I'm out. Uh, this bag, I don't know what that bag's for. So I've got a little light. This is just a little LED light. Ah, uh, it's not great. It's kind of like harsh, honestly, but just it's better to be lit up with a harsh light than to be unseen because like your hotel has a bulb that is only like five watts. The tripod, that's good. This is good because like it can act as like a little tabletop one and it also extends like so these little things here, uh, they extend like pretty severely. They like are telescopic, so I can also set it up if I need to. Um, super handy. It's kind of heavy, honestly. Uh, this is like a pretty heavy one. So this is going to live in my backpack. Um, yeah. Honestly, I might not bring this because this is like heavier than I 
now that I feel it, I'm like, oh, maybe this is a mistake. Um, so yeah, if you scratch that, I'm not gonna bring that. Screw that, we don't need that. Let me go in here, let me get something else. It's my cat's litter box, by the way. Uh, yes, yeah, so over here, I have just a little plastic one. So this is coming with me. Let's bring this instead. Okay. Uh, like that, that suspense there, like total, total gotcha moment there. I'm not bringing that. That one's like a lot nicer. It's a big metal one. But yeah, that thing weighs like two pounds. So no, I've got an extra battery and battery charger. Ideally, I would have another battery than this, but uh, I didn't have time to get one. This thing is a little SD card holder. So it just like holds SD cards and like gives a little bit of cushion to protect them so they don't get like damaged or scratched. Uh, there. This is the uh, camera bag, which came free with my camera. It's kind of like whatever, but it'll keep everything together. So all of this will fit in here. Well, this fits on the side and these little guys fit inside. I show you like the whole thing, but uh, I'm using my camera right now. But I will actually go over here and... Hi. So here's my camera. If you want to like check it out, it's got one of these little uh, flippable screens. So perfect if I'm doing like one of these like talking head videos, I can like hold my camera uh, pretty easily. This is my shotgun mic that I have. You can see that tape there. This is because my cat knocked it on the floor and broke it just like two days ago. They sent me a few different ones in different stages. Oh, hi. Yeah, look at you. No, no. Ah. <laughs> so that's great, but um, that makes it a little bit better for. Um, dealing with like noisy places. It directs the sound just like towards your face. And uh, yeah, so that's my, my camera. All this stuff fits in that little bag. Toilet paper, that is a good thing to bring with you when you're going to another country where you don't know what the toilet situation is. Uh, I don't know if they use toilet paper or if they use water or like whatever, but um, this is what I'm comfortable with. So I like to bring toilet paper with me um, just in case. Some places you can't flush it down the toilet though, so you gotta like know what you're doing, do a little research beforehand. This is actually um, hydrogen peroxide, which I use in case I'm sending seeds. It's used to disinfect them, but also it can be used in a pinch to disinfect fruit if I have to eat the skin, like for berries and stuff like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the situation is in Africa, if I can eat the fruit skin or not, I'm guessing not. So I think this is gonna be handy if uh, I'm eating something that I can't peel. Uh, bug spray. Mosquitoes are a nuisance in Africa. So uh, bringing this, it's got DEET in it. D-E-E-T, which is uh, bad for you, but also bad for mosquitoes. So that's always good to have. These are um, supplements. Got my vitamins in here, gotta bring those. And um, in here we've got a little toiletry bag, uh, shaving cream, razor, toothpaste, travel toothbrush, travel size deodorant, uh, contacts. I do not wear contacts when I travel but uh, I am terrified of losing my glasses. So this is just to buy me some time if the inev if not inevitable, if the worst case scenario happens and I lose my glasses, I could pop these in my eyes and be able to see until I could find a new pair of glasses or I guess contact solution if I needed to. Uh, so that's just kind of like a backup in <laughs> like this horror situ situation where I lose my glasses. Uh, hasn't happened yet on like an international trip, but it's happened in domestic ones and it's kind of terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so here is a shampoo conditioner combo, Pert Plus. It's terrible shampoo, but yeah, believe it or not, not a sponsor. <laughs> None of these things are a sponsor. Like, I can happily take it or leave it with any of these. But what's great is that it's got shampoo and conditioner in one, so it's only one bottle. Uh, this is a little thing. It's got like four band-aids, uh, a few antacid tablets in case I get sick, 
and then also a modium. Now, modium is something that plugs you up, so if you get diarrhea, it uh, keeps you from pooping, which is not a good thing, usually. You want to poop. If you need to poop, you gotta poop. You gotta get that out of your system. But if you have to take a bus or a flight or something, and you have diarrhea, uh, you're in trouble. So it's good to have that uh, with you just in case that happens to you. Um, sunblock. Comb. That's it. The hotels will always give you like a little crappy bar of soap, so I'll just like pick those up when I go. Here's my laptop. This will go in my messenger bag as well. It kind of just barely fits in there. So it's not ideal, but this is a uh, not a full laptop. It doesn't have an optical drive. It doesn't really have a whole lot to it. It's more like a netbook. Yeah, I think it's a netbook. And um, yeah, perfectly fine for my purposes. It's easy to load. Um, it's got a good hard drive on it, so I can back up my footage on it and put all of that in my bag and be ready to go. Finally, I'll show you what I'm going to be, what's going to be on my person for when I actually leave tomorrow morning. Uh, just to show you a few things that I'm not packing anywhere, they're just like on me. These are vintage style Doc Martens made in the UK. All the ones that you get from the Doc Martin shops at the mall. Those are made in China and not as good. These ones are a little bit tougher. Uh, they last forever. They've got like, these rubber soles that will just like never wear down. It like, takes years for them to wear down. Uh, my last pair, actually the, the tops completely disintegrated before the bottoms did. And those lasted 10 years. And that was actually the Chinese ones, which are not quite as good, but still pretty good. Um, <laughs> So that's, uh, I like wearing these because like they're, I like the way that they look and they're also just um, sturdy. They're very tough. Like I, these are good for like walking through, um, like a, if I'm like walking through a stream or I'm walking through a city, walking, you know, up a mountain, it's good to have like a good sturdy shoe. Like I see all these travelers traveling with like flip flops and I think they're crazy. Um, I like having boots they're just they're good for like any sort of situation except for you know going somewhere that's nice <clears throat> um also you know these ones i got fairly recently it's like a couple of years ago and one thing that i do that's very like sappy is that i uh put the name of places i've been in the shoes so that's you see china there uh i don't know if you can see all of these there's czech republic uh, Mexico is at the top. My cat is making it very difficult to make this video, by the way, because she's like headbutting me as I do this. Uh, Bolivia, Colombia, and pretty soon it's gonna be Seychelles, Madagascar, Ethiopia, and Kenya on there too. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think I need to wrap up this video because the cat is like, you've been doing this enough. Uh, <laughs> I have this hoodie, this hoodie I've been wearing, I've been wearing this hoodie for like way too long. It looks like garbage now, but it's super warm. It's very, it's very warm, it's very uh, lightweight, and what's great about it is even though I'm going somewhere that I'm probably not going to need a hoodie, you know, Africa is fairly warm. Um, sometimes you get like on a bus or something and it's just like super duper um, cold. Like they put the AC up too high. If you if you travel a lot, I'm sure you've had this experience. Like every country seems to do it, where like they just like jack up the AC to like stay awake or something. I don't know why the bus drivers are like that, but if I'm gonna be on a bus or like even a flight, it's good to have something uh, more for the AC than anything else. Or if it just happens to be cold, I wasn't expecting it to be cold in parts of Africa. Um, it also doubles as a pillow. You can like roll this thing up and like tuck it into itself and make a little pillow out of it. <laughs> as uh, Vostok is demonstrating. Uh, and also I've got one of my Weird World Explorer t-shirts and a pair of pants which I am not attached to. Uh, that way towards the end of my trip if I want to I can ditch those and make my pack a little bit lighter. It's about 11 p.m. now, and I'm um, going to pack all this up 
finish a few little things and then go to bed tomorrow morning. I'm gonna fly out. Okay, it's time to leave. This is always the most, I don't know, <laughs> thrilling and terrifying part. It's just like walking out your door on the way to the airport because it's like, I don't know, it's like going on a roller coaster. You don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a lot of like ups and downs and good things and bad things and it's kind of terrifying but um, also exhilarating. So let's do it. Here's what I do, by the way, to clean my laundry. So I got my laundry inside this sink here, I fill it with water, I use my little laundry soap, I scrub everything and let it, the soap drain, then I fill it with water to agitate it a little bit, and I let it drain again, and I'll clean it out like maybe like two times to get all the soap suds out. So that's how I clean my laundry while I am traveling, and then when it's, uh, Done, I hang it to dry. So here are my, my pants here. These are the, the ones I was mentioning. And uh, they're a little bit damp. I hung these out uh, last night. And they're like a little damp at the, the top where it's thick, but like otherwise it's all, all dried out. Uh, these pants I'm wearing now, these take like a little bit more time, maybe like two days. So uh, yeah, that's it. But what's more interesting is here is my view. Yeah, got a lot of exciting things on the way, guys, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. I hope you liked uh, seeing a little bit about how I travel, how I pack to travel, and uh, coming up soon, there's going to be a whole hell of a lot of videos from Africa, and uh, I've found a lot of cool stuff, which I'll be posting very soon. All right, take care. Bye. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, you may want to check out the video that is below me right now. That should be good, too. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, it is a huge help to my channel, so please do consider subscribing or clicking that bell. That does something, too. Not sure what it is. Also, check out the description below. There's all sorts of other things I have going on. I don't even know anymore. But, guys, I will see you next time. Take care.